I'm Steph Strickland with GeekWire Studios here at AWS reInvent 2024, and we are talking about enhancing solutions at the edge. I would like to introduce you to my two guests right now. We've got Sean Finnerty, the AVP, Cloud and Infrastructure Technology at Merck, as well as Jeff Feist, the Executive Director at Merck. Welcome, thank you guys for joining me. Thanks for having us. Thank you. My first question to you is uh, simple, deceptively simple, with probably a more complicated answer. Why is Merck choosing to focus on the edge environment? Yeah, maybe I'll start. So uh, we've been on a transformation journey with our IT hosting solutions for the last three or four years. Uh, we made some significant investments. We chose to start with our data center workloads, uh, co-hosted in a, in a centralized location, because we knew those workloads really well, we knew how to affect them, we knew paths to move them to cloud and modernize those workloads. When we look at the edge, we have a lot of very interesting both legacy workloads, latency sensitive workloads, uh, things that are very tightly coupled to our manufacturing environment, we, we manufacture products for our customers, um, and our research environments, which have local latency sensitivity requirements, all sorts of things like that. So when we started our transformation journey, we said let's focus on the data centers, get some momentum going, get some energy going. We've been at that for three years now, had a lot of success, now we're pivoting our focus to the edge. And I think it's an interesting time to do that because A, I think our business is ready for that change as well. They've seen the success we've had in our data centers and the technology's caught up to where we want it to be with offerings like Outpost and other things we're evaluating at the edge for us to use. So it's a really exciting time. From your perspective? So initially for our transformation program, we leveraged a lot of the AWS web services initially because that had a lot of the foundation that we were really looking for. We could leverage infrastructure as code right away, we could leverage pipelines, we could leverage APIs, and that really allowed us to focus less on establishing a foundational technology and a lot more on the ways of working. So once we established that and we were incredibly successful, now we'll have to take a lot of those learnings, a lot of that foundational capabilities that we built and apply those to our on-prem edge environments. Regarding edge, and, and you, you sort of touched on this, was the biggest factor latency or security, bringing it a little bit closer to home? Where, what was really the, the thing that made you say, you know what, I, I, we do want to pivot to this? Yeah, so it, it's sort of a combination of all those things. So at the edge, we tend to host our most sensitive workloads, our most secure workloads. So it's certainly a bar to clear with respect to operational performance, availability, security. But as Jeff alluded to, the ways of working have become increasingly important for us, right? It's not just about build a server in a place anymore. It's how we build it, how we operate it, how we manage it, how we make it resilient, how do we cost manage that environment more effectively and more transparently. So all of those things now that we spent the last many years working on applying to our enterprise workloads, now we can bring to the special class of workloads we have at the edge. Those capabilities exist now for us to keep going with what we've been doing. How does AWS fit into this picture? We've been using AWS very heavily for several years now. That's where our initial cloud transformation was focused on. But as we set our sights on edge, we wanted to have the same benefits, the same simplicity that we have inside the public cloud environment. So one of the capabilities that we're looking at is AWS Outpost as a solution to give us the AWS cloud-like benefits on-prem. The way we like, typically like to talk about it is not say that cloud is a place where we run our workloads, but it's really a mindset and a methodology for how we host those workloads. So by leveraging a capability like AWS Outpost, we get those benefits of easily managed solutions, a lot more automation, and essentially shifting a lot of that undifferentiated heavy lifting away from us and a larger partner like AWS to help achieve our goals. Given that this is a transformation that was started recently, how, what challenges do you anticipate as you continue to make this uh, migration? Yeah, it, there's, first of all, there's a mindset shift as Jeff alluded to, right? Cloud, people think of cloud as like computers in some other room, right? Which is true, technically. But like for us, it's very much a way of working. Like how are you deploying that workload? Are you going to the console and manually provisioning things with humans? That doesn't scale, right? So are we using, now we're using software-defined pipeline-based deployments, CICD, automation taking those same techniques and being able to apply them to the edge and our way of working, like that to me is the biggest value driver for this transformation. Is yes, we get all the cool tech and we move the undifferentiated heavy lifting off our plates onto our partner's plates, but being able to get consistency and velocity out of how we build these environments and the ways drive the ways of working into more and more teams across the company, we've proven that that has straight line business benefits. So if we can go faster with the infrastructure, our scientists can go faster with the research, our manufacturing teams can go faster with the product production, everybody benefits. Like everybody so, benefits. everybody benefits. When we move to the edge too, there are some additional constraints that we have to deal with that we typically don't have to deal with in the cloud. 
in the cloud we experience almost unlimited capacity. So we have to worry about things like physical size, space limitations in our walls. We have network bandwidth constraints. So those are some of the capabilities that we have to think about. How do we really solve? We have to approach it a little differently because of these, but we know we still want to provide that same velocity as Sean was describing for our customers. So it's working very closer with these internal application teams to determine how we can meet their business requirements for resiliency, performance, agility, while still keeping in these cloud transformational initiatives. You both have such a long tenure of employment at Merck. Did you ever see this 15 years ago where we are today? I mean, this must, at the time, if someone would have told you when you started, this it would have sounded like science fiction fantasy, yet here we are. How's yeah. that been? It's funny, we joke all the time about this. Like, when I started at Merck, it was literally crawling around in the data center under the floor pulling cables and physically racking servers into racks uh, and hand building them, like standing there one at a time for weekends and weekends doing this. Now, you push a button from your desk and you can have 100 servers in 45 minutes, right? So it, it's a complete evolution, like from complete transformation of how the industry works. Like in, in throughout my career, I started doing this in 1999 uh, professionally. Uh, you see these major industry shifts like throughout your career when you do it as long as I've been doing it, right? Machine virtualization was a big shift, and then there was a lot of security transformation several years ago, and then cloud was clearly like the next big thing. Jeff and I have been working together for a long time on this. Like when you see it, like we started using AWS in around 2012. So when you see it in 2012, you can start to imagine what we might be like sitting here 13, 14 years later, uh, working on What's next? Now it's AI, now it's you know all the announcements with Bedrock and how can we further simplify our our customers' ways of working. Like it's incredibly exciting. I see you nodding. Yeah, no, I think for, for me what really stands out is in the past we, as Sean mentioned, we sort of could see where we we're going and this is could lead to a lot of direct success for us. And we've in the past taken some attempts to, to kind of try and go down this path, but it was sort of best effort at the time, and we, we've had some struggles there, but what's exciting for me is with some leadership changes and getting the entire enterprise behind this direction, we've been able to really push the entire company forward. It has really taken some of the initial pushes and sort of like, trust us, it'll work, and then as we started receiving the value over time, everyone is bought into this. And that's really been one of the keys to our success, is having that true enterprise adoption, enterprise buy-in. We see a lot of other companies struggle because the idea of, yes, we can do this, is a lot different than we're actually invest the effort to get behind it. Uh, the company is lucky to have you, since you have been there uh, for so long to give that perspective. Sean, Jeff, thank you very much for making the time speaking with me today. Thank you, it's nice to meet you. I'm Seth Strickland, you're watching GeekWire Studios.